from tabletmag.com uh, tablet. <laughs> oh, whoops. Yeah. Okay. Tabletmag.com. Someone sent me this on our Telegram group. China's global lockdown propaganda campaign inside the CCP's, that's the Communist Party's use of social media bots and other disinformation tactics to promote its own response to the coronavirus pandemic and attack its critics. Now, you might think that this is just a story about all the evils of Chinese censorship. And uh, it's a long article. We're, we're not going to get through the whole thing right now. But when we skip ahead to the end, you're going to see why this is such an important story and the conclusion from this as regards the coronavirus pandemic is really important to understanding the international story here and you know i've shied away from getting into the uh some of the conspiracy theories and i don't mean to dismiss them as conspiracy theories but was the virus made in an american lab or a chinese lab or sent here or sent there or engineered for this it almost doesn't matter because the, the people who are capable of that would be capable of misdirection anyway. And if you run down those rabbit holes, it's very easy to get lost and then get dismissed as a conspiracy theorist, not because your theories or your research is unsound, but because now you're talking about minutia that doesn't really affect things and people don't really care about. And even if it were true, doesn't really have significant implications. But you don't have to get down more than one level even below the surface to see just how corrupt the bigger picture is and, and, and understand. I mean, if there's an elephant, uh, you know, in the corner and you can't see it because there's a there's a sheet over it, you know, it, it doesn't help to send in a, a probe and dissect the elephant or try to send a scope up its butt and see if it's got any polyps. No. Uh, yes, I'm getting to that age. But no, you, you pull the sheet off the elephant. You don't need to dissect it. And, 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 and that's why I dismiss so many conspiracy theories, even ones that I believe are sound and, and that I respect. It's, it's not because they're, they're wrong uh, or dangerous, but they're, that they're unhelpful and that they're, they're kind of a misdirection. But let's take a second here. Let's look at China's global lockdown propaganda campaign. In the words of Simon Lays, paraphrasing the great sinologist Laszlo Ladani, even the most mendacious propaganda must necessarily entertain some relation to truth. In Wuhan in late December, Dr. Li Wenliang warned his friends that a new SARS-like illness had begun spreading rapidly. Li's message inadvertently went viral on Chinese social media, causing widespread panic and anger at the Chinese Communist Party. On January 7, Xi Jinping informed his inner circle that the situation in Wuhan would require their personal supervision. Two weeks later, Xi personally authorized the lockdown of Hubei province based on his philosophy of Fang Kong, the same hybrid of health and security policy that inspired the re-education and quarantine of over one million Uyghur Muslims infected with extremism in Xinjiang. The World Health Organization's representative in China noted that trying to contain a city of 11 million people is new to science. The lockdown of 11 million people is unprecedented in public health history. So it is certainly not a recommendation the World Health Organization made. Now, if you don't know the background on the Uyghur Muslims in China and the oppression and the concentration camps, and the, the re-education camps that they're being subjected to right now. You need to do some background research on this. At least fill yourself in. You know, Go back. Some of our prior videos exposing this. Uh, and I shouldn't say exposing because I can't take credit for it. This is, like, this, this is one of humanity's darkest open secrets. And to see that China used it as an excuse for that, uh, it, you know, again, I've said this before, the coronavirus is the excuse for a lot of people to do whatever they wanted to do anyway. You, you wanted to print $10 trillion. You wanted to make the super rich way richer. You wanted to shut down schools. You wanted to, you know, profiteer this, that, or the other, whatever. You want to lie to people like this. You want to sit at home and be lazy on welfare. You want to turn into a Karen and boss other people around. 
Corona is your ticket to your dreams. But in China, it's locking down people and further suppressing their Muslim population. Now, to the scale of this, the CCP can find 57 million Hubei residents to their homes. At the time, human rights observers expressed concerns, as one expert told the New York Times. The shutdown would almost certainly lead to human rights violations and would be patently unconstitutional in the United States. Yeah, but even in the U.S., you still get away with the lockdowns if you're a governor, like we covered this story in Pennsylvania. Oh, yeah, now months after the fact, now that it's gotten to the courts, that was unconstitutional. Regardless, on January 29, World Health Organization Director Tedros Adhanom said he was very impressed and encouraged by the president's, that's Xi Jinping's, detailed knowledge of the outbreak and the next day praised China for setting a new standard for outbreak response. Yet only six days in the lockdown, unprecedented in public health history, had produced no results. So Tedros was praising human rights abuses with nothing to show for them. International COVID-19 hysteria began around January 23rd when leaked videos from Wuhan began flooding the internet. And they put leaked in quotes here began flooding international social media sites, including Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube, all of which are blocked in China, allegedly showing the horrors of Wuhan's epidemic and the seriousness of its lockdown. Do you remember this? I mean, there's something really wrong with the mainstream media that, you know, I kind of grapple with here with Adam versus the man. And that what, what has the news become? A 24-hour cycle of fear without memory. And so while the mainstream media is constantly struggling to warn you, warning, 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 this could kill you. Look at this, look at this, look at this. At the same time, they are generally ignorant of their own warnings from even the day before. There's no sense of time. And one of the most important things we can do in independent media as a counter to the mainstream media is take the time to not just say, what do I have to tell you about what happened in the last 24 hours and why you need to be afraid and watch me now, but instead be able to take a, a longer term perspective on this. So just think back. I, I remember seeing the pictures on social media that people in China at, at airports and train stations trying to get out of wherever they were we're wearing, you know, five-gallon water jugs with the bottoms cut out so that they could wear them over their heads as, as isolation helmets. That, that there were families traveling with children where they would bag them up. Not like up and pick them up and bag their kids up. But no, like they had their kids in strollers covered in plastic trash bags. And then we saw the conspiracy that was very believable that the Chinese government was now downplaying the hysteria and hiding the bodies. There are piles of bodies around China. We're going to hide them because the Chinese Communist Party doesn't want you to see them. Viral videos claim to show residents spontaneously collapsing in the streets in scenes likened to the movie Zombieland and the show The Walking Dead. Did you, do you remember this? There were videos of people on lockdown going, someone just walked and fell down the street. Now there's dead bodies in the streets. Somebody wanted you to believe that the virus was that bad. One video purportedly showed a SWAT team catching a man with a butterfly net for removing his mask. But in hindsight, the cri this crisis theater is somewhat comical. In the infamous video, the spontaneously collapsing man extends his arms to catch himself. Official Chinese accounts widely shared an image of a hospital being supposedly constructed in one day, but which actually showed an apartment 600 miles away. You remember this, right? China, they're freaking out. They got to build hospitals. They are emergency hospitals being built in China. Nope. No, nah, turns out that wasn't even a thing. Images of Li Wenliang on a ventilator, sometimes holding his ID card, were released and widely displayed by top news outlets around the world. In a viral tweet on January 25th, an epidemiologist 
with little background on infectious disease or holy mother of God, the new coronavirus is a 3.8. How bad is that reproductive RO value? It is thermonuclear pandemic level bad. This was the first of a month long series of dubious, widely shared tweets by previously unknown Eric Feigelding, prompting a prominent Harvard colleague to denounce him as a charlatan. And then success, beginning in February, the CCP reported an exponential decline in coronavirus cases until March 19, when they announced their lockdown had eliminated domestic cases entirely. This is why I did a video called the coronavirus hoax on February 1st of this year. Yeah, a lot of I told you so. So this article goes on to detail all of the information, not all of it, because you can't even cover all of it, but so much information manipulation by the Chinese government around this. But skipping to the end, skipping ahead to the end of the article, the last two paragraphs, the most benign possible explanation for the CCP's campaign for global lockdowns is that the party aggressively promoted the same lie internationally as domestically that lockdowns worked. For party members, when Wuhan locked down, it likely went without saying that the lockdown would eliminate coronavirus. If Xi willed it to be true, then it must be so. This is the totalitarian pathology that George Orwell called double thing. But the fact that authoritarian regimes always lie does not give them a right to spread deadly lies to the rest of the world, especially by clandestine means. What this suggests, and it kind of, you know, reading this, it kind of hits me like a bolt of lightning. Like, yeah. Thank you for explaining this. Thank you for the narrative. That Because this... This connects the dots a lot better than anything else. That China's racket with the virus, and again, I've said this before, that it doesn't have to be a, a specifically planned pandemic. It could be that, hey, this regular virus that's now part of the global human petri dish kind of just people freaked out about it. Let's, let's, let's increase. Hey, when people freak out, isn't that, hey, that's normally our job, says government. Well, people are freaking out. Let's make them freak out a little bit more. Yeah, how about a lot more? And to think that the Chinese government isn't capable of influencing the media of the world to increase the fear about this? Well, of course they are. The last paragraph. And then there's the possibility that by shutting down the world, Xi Jinping, who vaulted through the ranks of the party, Quotes ancient Chinese scholars has mastered debts and derivatives, studies complexity science, and envisions a socialist future with China at its center knew exactly what he was doing. And the world is suffering from a China virus, not of biology, but of propaganda. <laughs> 